capital is not going to increase inflation, it'll diminish inflation. It has a negative impact on inflation. Not a, it doesn't raise inflation. But that's hard for people to think about right now because inflation is up and there's a direct correlation in most people's mind. Well, why is inflation? Well, government spending money. Well, that's not the reason for the inflation. The reason for the inflation is that we have a supply chain problem that is really severe and it's causing a significant increase in prices. The downside is prices have gone up because of supply chain concerns. We've worked as hard on the supply chain concerns. I think you're going to see, you've already begun to see, and you're going to see over the next couple months, oil prices, gas prices of gas pump come down. You know, the biggest, one, one, one of the, a third of the increase in inflation is used automobiles. Um, so, I mean, it is a real problem. But the point is, that has to do with supply chain as well. But it also has to do with the fact that not everybody's looking for a used automobile. But those who are, they're paying higher prices because there's fewer of them because of COVID and what was sold out and the like. So I think it's, uh, it really is, it's a real bump in the road. It does affect families. When you walk in the grocery store and you're paying more for whatever you're purchasing, it matters. It matters to people. When you're paying more for gas, so um, moments ago you were pretty definitive when you said that President Biden would only support extending these programs if they were paid for. Period. Does that necessarily mean that sometime in the future President Biden would be prepared to raise taxes? Well, I think President Biden's been pretty clear about his uh, protection of keeping taxes low for the middle class and lowering them. Repeating because now we have the numbers. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that transitory is no longer the right way to describe inflation. He said it now appears that factors pushing inflation upward will linger well into next year. I asked Brian Deese this question yesterday, so let me put it to you today. Given that, given what Jerome Powell is now saying, does the administration, does the president acknowledge that inflation is more entrenched and not transitory? Well, Kristen, I would say that I, I can't speak, obviously, for Jerome Powell, but I think part of the point here is that it doesn't really matter what you call it. Our view, but more importantly, the view of the Federal Reserve, which he oversees, private sector forecasters in the markets, has been and remains and has been for months uh, that inflation will ease over time. That is the projections of the Federal Reserve. Uh, that is the projections of outside forecasters. Uh, and that it will uh, it will ease next. I think when people hear the term well into next year, though, I interviewed a business owner today some families who say it's this piling up of prices that's causing the suffering. What, what do you say to those families um, who are suffering and they hear a term like well into next year and they feel panicked? I would say that we take the rise in prices and it, that impacts individual families, small businesses, anyone across this country, incredibly seriously. And you guys have been consistent on your argument as it relates to Build Back Better and inflation now for weeks, if not months. Senator Manchin has been consistent in his position for weeks and not months. Obviously, something is going to need to change in that dynamic on the senator's side of things for him, I presume, to support Build Back Better. What changes in your argument that resonates with the senator, given his long-held positions here on inflation? Well, uh, we will certainly let the senator speak for himself. He will, of course, be speaking with the president, as the president uh, alluded to uh, early next week. Uh, and I would expect the president will convey much of which we've, what we've conveyed publicly, that uh, while we've seen costs increase in some areas and we've seen a good direct, uh, them move in a good direction in some areas as well, uh, what we need to do now is think about what we're going to do about rising costs. What is our plan to address rising costs? Uh, you know, you saw every single Republican uh, in the House vote against Build Back Better. What were they voting against? Yes, they were voting against the president's agenda. They were also voting against lowering costs. And for yesterday, Brian talked to us for 40 minutes about lots of data points that are moving in the right direction. Yeah. So I'm wondering, given all of those things and given what you're talking about, prices month to month moving in the right direction, what's the White House's big picture view on why so many Americans are so pessimistic about the economy and about the direction of the country? Because another data point is more and more Americans are saying right, wrong track on, on monthly polling on that key question. Well, what I was, there may be, there are certainly Americans who look at data. I'm not suggesting that. Many of them work in New York and other places. I'm conveying that the way people experience it, I think you know what I'm saying, but the way people experience it, and the president just said this as well, is not by looking at charts in the paper, which it takes to buy meat, to have burgers for a barbecue. That's, that's what I was saying. Um, why are people experiencing things or why, because, and I, we've talked about this a little bit before, but 
you know, a lot of it, what we're seeing in our data is, uh, is people's psychology on the economy, on how they're experiencing things in the country right now is related to COVID. And the fact that COVID, we're still in a fight uh, against this virus, uh, people expected it to be over sooner. That truck was intending to come to the U.S. border, that those folks were trying to come to the U.S. Is the president, is the administration um, reaching out to Mexico, to partners in Central America this morning? Does this cause for a certain reevaluation of the strategy to deter migration or? It would really come through the Department of Homeland Security, uh, that kind of outreach. Uh, so I would point you to them for any more detail about a connection with the Mexican government. Or the vice president at this point? I can, I can check and see, but I suspect that conversation would first happen through the Department of Homeland Security. To be open, that encouraging schools are open. Yeah. Many schools are fully open, but inside schools, there are often uh, you know very strict rules. Uh, for example, sometimes students are required to eat outside or eat distant from each other, not talk to each other while they're eating. Does the White House want to see those rules lifted as well to get back to a more normal school experience? Well, schools are taking steps, especially since we've only recently approved uh, through the CDC and FDA vaccines for 5 to 11 year olds, they're not approved for kids younger than that, to keep their kids safe and keep students safe. I will tell you, I have a three year old who goes to school, sits outside for snacks and lunch, wears a mask inside, and it's no big deal to him. I'm not saying that's the case for everybody, but these are steps that schools are taking to keep kids safe. And I think the vast majority of parents appreciate that. Go ahead. On that same point, though, just politically, do these numbers make it more challenging, you think, to pass Build Back Better, given the fact that opponents and even Manchin argue that pouring more money into the economy will only make things worse? Well, what we know is what 17 Nobel uh, economists, Nobel laureate economists, have conveyed, which is that this will help address inflation. We know that economists across the board, many, many across the board, have conveyed that this will help address what we see as rising costs. Politically, arguing we're going to bring down the cost of child care, we're going to bring down the cost of uh, preschool, we're going to make affordable housing a reality, and on the other side of the aisle, you have people who are opposed to lowering that cost is a pretty viable argument. Invaded them is you should look closely at who has a plan here and who's just shouting from a megaphone about it being a problem. We all agree it's a problem. It's who's going to do something about it. Uh, Republicans are circulating a modified version of the CBO score for Build Back Better. Uh, in their version, it included extensions of programs without being paid for, which we understand is not how the president um, put forward this legislation. But the reason that they're saying they did that is because uh, Lindsey Graham says, if you believe these programs are going to go away after one or two years, uh, you shouldn't have a driver's license. We all know child tax credits are not going to go away after a year. What does the White House say to that? Well, uh, to quote of all people, Norm Ornstein at the American Enterprise Institute, who put this quite well, quote, you can't assume programs will be extended just because Lindsey Graham wants to assure that. An estimate based on what's not in the bill is bogus and fundamentally dishonest. I mean, this is not a CBO score. This is a fake CBO score. It's not that there's a particular irony here uh, that I don't, it, it shouldn't be lost on Senator Graham. Maybe it is lost on Senator Graham. I don't know. Uh, that the plan they proposed and passed for and passed into law, the 2017 tax cuts, were $2 trillion, which were not paid for in any way, shape, or form. That didn't seem to upset them at all. And I will say, and they can thank us in any way they would like for this, that what our projections and the projections of our economists predict is that for our plan, um, uh, in, if, as this plan continues in the second decade, uh, it would actually reduce the deficit by $2 trillion. So we're actually covering their irresponsible tax cuts to corporations and high wealth and net wealth individuals. They're very welcome for that. Thank you. I just wanted to sort of diagram a sentence that you, you said oh, earlier. To, okay. <laughs> to, um, it's a Friday. Give uh, me a break. <laughs> uh, well, I'll explain. You okay. Said, you, you were talking about... And you need a chalkboard. Yeah, the, the CBO, uh, the CBO um, report of the sure. non-existent bill, and, and you, in explaining why you didn't think it was valid, said that the president would never support extending these programs if they weren't paid for, period. And the reason I'm asking this yeah. question is I envision a scenario where in like two or three years, I'm still sitting here, maybe you're not, but, uh, but a friend, no, <laughs> wow. a this is like a real harsh line of questioning. <laughs> uh, you might be done with us, but a, a Biden press secretary is sitting here and you're trying to extend some element of Build Back Better because as we all know, the package is not gonna move. Or, or the elements of the package wouldn't all move together in a, we're just renewing Build Back Better. So I want to be extremely specific. Mm -hmm. 
if there's an element of Build Back Better that expires, the president will never support renewing that element unless it is fully paid for and deficit neutral. He wants to – he would only ex support extending these programs if they were paid for, period. I'm not going to parse all individual moments, but that is what he has stated publicly. That is his commitment. He is a person who is fiscally responsible, unlike the person who asked for the fake CBO score, uh, and that is his commitment as long as he is president. So if it's child tax credit or, or uh, you know, payments for child care comes up, you know, it's expiring, it's on its own. You don't have a way of paying I'm not going to get ahead of a hypothetical, but again, what this fake CBO score was about was extending all of the programs that would expire without paying for them. The president would pay for them. There's no bill that exists on this front, and we don't even know what the vehicle would be. Uh, but again, the president has been clear about his intention to pay for these programs, and so that's one of the reasons why this is so disingenuous. We talked about inflation here in the room, um, the highest we haven't seen since 1982. Um, the president's been in office about 11 months. What grade does the president give himself on his handling of the economy? I think every president I've ever worked for, I've only worked for two, but they try not to grade themselves. Um, but I will tell you about what the president is proud of working on with Congress, with governors, with leaders across the country, is his effort to lower prices for people across the country.